In the following tutorial, I'm going to explain how to install Ninja Forms and how to set up your new form, as well as details on emails and actions, uh, a quick overview on the submission area, and how to add it to your site. So first, you'll want to log into your WordPress backend and you'll want to install the Ninja Forms plugin. Um, you may see it is a recommended plugin uh, for most of the themes. Um, if so, you can just click begin to installing plugins uh, and then select Ninja Forms. Um, if not, just go to plugins, add new. And from here, you'll want to then search uh, the plugins directory for Ninja Forms. Uh, this should bring up all the search results and then at Ninja Forms, the very first one, uh, just click install now and that will install the plugin and then it should be ready to use. So first it unpacked it, it says it's installing and it's been successfully installed, then just click activate plugin. And then you can just skip this section. And then it should go back to the uh, forms back end. So here's the form section. Uh, this will be added once the plugin's activated. And this will be the area that we're going to use uh, for today's tutorial. Now I'm going to show you how to add a new form. And we're just going to make a very basic one. Um, I'll link you to the documentation from uh, Ninja Forms themselves uh, so that you can get more details on how to build more advanced forms. Uh, but for today, we're just going to show you how to add name, email, uh, phone, and message. So we go to Forms and we'll go to Add New. And then you'll see on the uh, left hand side that we have all the fields that can be used with the forms and there's three tabs build your form emails and actions and settings uh, I'll cover more about emails and actions uh, in the next section uh, we'll also do a little bit on settings also so to build out your form uh, we're going to use uh, for this tutorial um, some elements uh, from the template fields and we'll also use the email section from user information. Um, so first of all I want to get the user's name uh, and I'm just going to use a text box. Uh, I find this is more useful. They can add um, the full name here rather than just using first and last name. So we'll just add a text box and it just comes over to the uh, left hand side or the right hand side. Uh, we'll label it so name and then you'll want the label position. Uh, right now it's above uh, Inside element looks much cleaner, so I, I prefer to use this. And then you can also use a placeholder item. Um, that's whenever they click the form, it will give a description. So add your name. And if you want to make that required, uh, go to restriction settings. And then there's a required checkbox. Click check. And you're great to go. So we've added name. Now I want to add email. So I'll go to user information and use email. And again, I will change the label position to inside the element and uh, add your email as the placeholder. Again, this can be whatever you want. And in restriction settings, you'll see that they have already enabled validate as an email address. That will make sure that they're actually entering uh, a correct email address. So that's perfect. And again, you can make this required if you need it and drop that down. Next, we'll add phone. Um, there is a phone number uh, option, but um, I prefer not to use this as often the entries go in uh, incorrectly and it stops the form from being sent. So I would just use a text box. It's much easier. So we'll use a text box. I'll just add phone. Again, little position inside. Uh, phone number is the placeholder. And you can make that required if you need to. And finally, I want the message section. So I want them to write a little bit more about their event or 
uh, whatever it is they're inquiring about. So just put in a uh, text area. Uh, this will add a larger text box. And we'll just label that a message. And again, uh, inside the element, uh, I'll leave a value for uh, let us know more about your event. Uh, so that's perfect. Uh, finally, if you want, you can also add an anti-spam uh, section. Um, this will just stop people from spamming your email address. Uh, you can also use plugins for that, but if you want anti-spam, you can select that. Um, you can have a little message. It can be whatever you want. So the question could be, what is uh, 2 minus 1? And then you put in the answer as 1 or whatever you like. And that will just prevent people from spamming you. So now you'll want to click save the form. Now we have it built. So click save. And it will say, uh, you haven't added a submit button. So select the box for that, insert a submit button. And give the form a title. So my new contact form. And then save. And as you'll see, it added a submit button for me. Next, you can head over to the emails and actions section. And we'll want to add two actions. One, uh, for the email to be sent to your account. And two, uh, will, will be an action that will confirm uh, a successful message. So let's just add new. And we'll name the action name uh, email admin. And it's going to be type email. And the from name, uh, we will use the name ID that we've created, so name. The from address, uh, we will leave blank, so please remove anything from the from address. Uh, the reason I say, uh, we do this is because if, for example, I was to add the email from the user, uh, there is a possibility that that will get the email blocked by your hosting. Why? Because, the email, because your server will see that an email generated from your WordPress account is being sent by someone else's email and therefore it detects it as spam. So leave from address blank. For the to section, you'll want to add your email address. So mark at test.com, for example. Again, you can have multiple addresses here. So you can add mark2 at test.com uh, and so forth. Just press enter and that will uh, complete it. Uh, the subject, uh, this can be whatever you want. So this will, is for your own use. So I, I will generally put in contact form email or inquiry. And then this will be the message that's sent. So in here, you'll want to add all the forms and all the fields that were added from your form. So if you head over to insert all fields, select, and that will effectively add all the information that you have put into the form that the user will send to you. So that'll just fill that in nicely for you. Finally, there is one last section that's very useful, advanced settings. And uh, it has a reply to section. This means whenever you click uh, to respond to the inquiry that it will reply to the user's email. So Go to reply to, uh, select, and then I would use email. Now that is the user's email, and that means you'll respond directly to them. And then we'll just hit save. So we'll just head over back to the list, and we'll create our, create our second action. And that will be a success message. So I'll just hit add new, and that action will be um, a success message and the type will be a success message and in here you can just write uh, a quick thank you message and um, to say thanks your form has been submitted so thank you thank you thanks your form has successfully been submitted full stop and save that means whenever someone completes the form, uh, they'll see this message and they'll know what's been submitted. Uh, you can add uh, other actions as well, including uh, emails to the users or a redirect to another page, but you can read more about that at uh, docs.ninjaforms.com and emails and actions. Uh, again, I'll link that in the section below so you can see. 
Finally, we'll go to the settings section um, just to review a couple of items in here. And we'll just go to display. And you can have two options that you might want to have checked. So one is clear the successfully completed form. So as soon as the form is completed, uh, all, of, all the values will be uh, removed and cleared. And the second will be hide, hide the successfully completed form. Uh, that means once the form is submitted, it will, it will vanish. Um, you can select this on or off depending on if you want the form to be hidden or not. So uh, I usually keep it on um, just for your reference. So uh, we'll just hit save and that's perfect. Now we'll want to go and create a page and we will want to add our ninja form to the page. So we'll go to pages, uh, we'll hit add new and we will title the page, so contact page or whatever you want to title it. And then uh, we will publish the page. And now the page is published, you'll see that there is an add form section. So in here, we'll just click add form and then we'll select the new form that we've created. So my new contact form, and we'll insert it to the page. And this is uh, the short code uh, for the form. You'll also be able to see that over in forms. If you go to the form section, you can actually just copy and paste it directly from uh, the short code section here as well. So now we've added the short code to the page. Uh, you'll just want to hit update. And you can now view the page, uh, review how the form looks, and then my suggestion would be to test it. Just uh, fill in the details um, and just see if you're going to receive the form in your email account. So uh, add in all the details, um, some details about the event. Uh, just hit submit and as you'll see we have the thank you for your form submission so that was the email that I or the uh, success message that I added earlier you should go over to your email account make sure that you've received the email um, if not uh, you may want to review uh, our other documentation on uh, submission form uh, email issues so you'll also find that it should be uh, linked in here also um, but that'll give you some more details as to why uh, you may not be receiving forms. It may take a couple of minutes, uh, so just uh, wait a wee while and refresh and see if you receive the form. Um, one final note, uh, there is also a submission section. So even if your form does not send the email directly to your email account, maybe there's some issues there. You can view all the submissions for any form that you've created. So if you're in the form section, look at the form that you want to view the submissions for, and then you'll see there's a few submissions. You can click that, or alternatively, if you go into the form, you'll also see uh, the little submission section here. So I'll hit submissions. And here you can see the test message that I just sent previously, and it was submitted one minute ago. Um, you can download all the submissions uh, my suggestion would be uh, after the first week just check and see if you have any submissions uh, and I would check once every week just to make sure that you're still receiving all the emails and that there are no issues there. So that's why um, this is really a great feature. It just means you'll never lose uh, any submissions straight to your site and uh, you have that security in place. That's everything in this tutorial folks. Uh, please leave your comments, uh, review the section below for links to all the documentation that I have uh, talked about and uh, good luck setting up your new form.